Class is in session. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Unlearn 16. Class is in session. Just me today in my office at school um, after the day has been done. Um, I, I don't even know where to start today because today took a bit of a turn at school. And it, it's interesting. Sometimes I try to avoid topics or I won't do certain TikToks because... Well, because it makes me too angry. I try not to do things when I'm angry. It's a very incredible Hulk. So <laughs> in that vein, following the whole Nick Fuentes, you know, your body, my choice forever um, podcast, just travesty. I tried to let it go for a minute, not forever, but I just try to put it down because let's be perfectly honest. He obviously said what he said, and the internet took care of that. Not that I advocate any of that, but it's not about one person. I guess that's my point. And I sat on him making this comment, and I and I spend a little too much time sometimes on X. And you start to see the um, onslaught of comments of hatred, of bigotry, of entitlement, to be honest, you start to see the onslaught of threats against women in the United States on the heels of this comment. And even on this platform right now, I have to be very careful, which I find hysterical, but I have to be very careful with the words I used and the descriptors I go into in order to make it palatable, in order to make it acceptable, acceptable for people to talk about. And, and what I find hilarious about that is that we are constantly shifting our language to things like S.A. Rather than saying what it really is. You know, the word people are saying grape. And I've always found it annoying and offensive that we've had to adjust our language. Now, some people adjust their language so it doesn't trigger those who are who have been victimized. That I understand. But I also, I mean, it's not like I know, oh, so many people who have been victimized, but I, I know a lot, you know, um, and the word doesn't bother them. You know what bothers them? The lack of justice. That's what bothers them. And that's what should be bothering us. The lack of accountability, the lack of justice. Uh, when you go on a platform like X and you're making these horrific statements to women on the heels of abortion laws in the United States, on the heels of state laws trying to claw back rights of women, what they have over their own body, the idea that a president can be elected, whether you like him or hate him, I don't care. But on the tail of that, on the tail of that, rather than have people excited about maybe a new page, excited about a new presidency, it seems as though there's an entire group of people that are just excited to spread their vitriol because space has been made available for them to do so. What? What? Now, I know some of you are going to say, yeah, but guys like Nick and these absolute you know, bucketheads of people have been kicked off major platforms. Well, they still have access, guys. They still have access on different platforms. My question is, why are we putting a leash on the justice system? Why are we putting a leash on um, cyber police? Why are we putting a leash and a limitation on the other side? If I'm going to be talking about SA, if I'm going to be talking about the real life statistics of uh, 25% of women by the age of 21 have experienced a significant SA in their lifetime, when I'm talking about that, why do I have to change my wording to make it palatable for who? So today it kind of, I, I shifted, right? So today I was in my um, History 10 class and kids came in and, um, we're talking about things like 
Nick's video and things like the reactions and what we are seeing being written on X and the access, um, these anonymous, tiny little men, I would say boys, the, the threats they are making in a world where there is no excuse, there is no reason, there is no legitimate way that a woman can get a, access to bodily autonomy and health care in certain states that have banned it, regardless of things like incest or essay. So you have men now typing out things like, cool, I can just pick the mother of my kids, whether she wants to or not. Guys, how is that not a threat? How is that not violence? Are we not all stipulating having an opinion is one thing, but can we all agree that that's violent? Can we all agree that that's the kind of threat? It's not new. You are not allowed to make threats against people and their person. It is illegal. It is a crime. How is it not being extended to this community? Is it because they can't track them down? I think they can, especially on X. I think if you're going to have a social media platform, it doesn't need to be published that you're, it's you and whatever, but it needs to be traced back to you. Absolutely. So if you say something like this, if you break the law, it is very easy to hold you accountable. I think if these little boys are going to say such things, they should say it with their full chest, with their video camera on in front of their boss, in front of their mother. You know, I had a room full of 15 year old girls and boys talking about how could this be the case now? They talked about consent. These kids, they talked about, about protecting women. They talked about educating men. They talked, you know, sometimes roughly in the sense that they don't always say the perfect thing. They don't always know how to phrase it. And they sometimes want to ask questions that can come off as being flat out just, I, I mean, I don't want to say flat out wrong. I want to say they just come out rough, right? And my job is to answer them and to redirect and make sure that they know how to have these big, hard conversations without sounding accusatory, without sounding um, discriminatory, without sounding aggressive in any way, shape or form, but it's fair to ask the questions. It is fair to have the conversation. You know, I think I've lived a, through teaching for the last 22 years and I have over, overseen many, many a debate about abortion, many a debate. You know what I oversee? intelligent, educated young people who have an opinion, but still carry themselves with respect and reverence to other people in that room. And when you start weaponizing your beliefs or you start weaponizing the law in order to put women in their place, in order to keep women down, in order to manipulate the domestic growth of a population, you're now oppressing. You're now, you're now enacting the very repressive things we have shed off years ago. Now, let's be honest, it hasn't been that long, right? It really hasn't been that long that women's rights, full women's rights, haven't even been legally achieved. Property rights, voting rights, um, running for office rights, um, working rights, um, maternity rights. Can you imagine a society that we don't make space for women to have, or anybody actually, to have and bear life? 
Are we okay? Are we okay when we don't make space for that? Are we okay when we don't make economic and social and, and cultural adjustments in order to allow for those individuals to bring life in this world? You know, you can go into so many deep sort of caverns of why. Why is it controlled? Why, why externally? Why, why is, is women, their bodily autonomy at such a high, high debate? Well, I think for a very long time, access and entitlement was our culture. And to some degree, I think, think we're still there. I think very often we speak very uh, passionately about ending racism, about ending classism, about fighting for the environment, about, you know, fighting anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. And all of that is important. But at some point, I feel like we've put down the whole trying to eliminate and fight sexism thing. We've said, well, we're done. It's over, right? Feminism has become a four letter word. Cause the fight is over. Is it guys? Spend 10 minutes on X. I don't think you think it is. Right. And I think I, I, I do understand that these anonymous men, and it's not all anonymous to be honest with you, but the ones making horrific threats, they're anonymous right? Um, because with a blue check mark does come accountability. So if you're going to make a direct threat, it's a much easier thing for the police to do. This is a community that's sort of grown, but they are very, very, very loud. And they're very loud because their content, just like on any other social media platform, denotes constant interaction. And the more interaction it gets, the higher up the platform it goes and the more views and the more controversy and the more and the more and the more. So we have this unrealistic heightened um, focus on this group of individuals. But I don't think you guys understand, like I've taught young girls and guys who have gone through some horrible things. And now we're sitting at a time in which we are finally starting to talk about it, stand up against it, and we are hit with this wave of how do we control their bodies further? My, your body, my choice. The empowerment of this individual to say that in public is my issue. He's an absolute disaster. Listen, nobody is more broken than this kid. To, to be honest, he should be evaluated by a medical professional. One person isn't my fear. My fear is that he speaks for quite a few. And in a state of fear, desperation, anger, and rage, and in a new political environment where this is allowed to be said under the guise of free speech, we forget that when we don't hold people accountable, when we don't make sure that they own what they've said, when we don't put them in a room stand toe to toe and have them say it to our face, they become emboldened. And the more emboldened they become, the more dangerous they are. I will have as many conversations with my students as possible. They are empathetic. They are intelligent. They sometimes can be messy, but they understand and they believe in basic human rights afforded to everybody on this planet. And they're not going to stand by while other people decide 
what makes them feel better and how they're allowed to control others. There's no more important lesson that I will ever teach than that one. None. I think that those conversations, having them in our educational institutions is perhaps the single most important thing we could ever do. Understanding what basic human rights look like, understanding how to stand up for them both in the classroom and out of the classroom, understanding who you are as a person and how you walk through this world is an ethical representation of you, your family, your education, of the system in which you live. And watching this onslaught, watching this wave of misogyny, watching this wave of hatred and anger is essential. Don't you dare look away. Don't you dare turn your head. Don't you dare ignore the damage that this could cause. Now, in no way, shape or form am I sitting here saying that everybody on one side of the aisle, you know, wants to cause harm. What I am saying is when you hide behind the, the guise of free speech and you allow anyone to say anything, even if it breaks the law, even if it threatens personal and physical safety, you are part of a situation. You are part of a problem that is creating a new culture that is incredibly dangerous. Because I'm also going to say this. There's only so hard you can push those people. Right? You saw what happened to Nick's home. Do I think that's right? No, of course not. Is it just escalating a problem? Sure. But here we go. Here we go. If we don't have rule of law, if we don't have civility, if we don't understand that threats of violence and control of people's body isn't at the root of all civil rights protests, you will escalate everything. And you'll find out just how powerful that other side is. In my opinion, the right should have disavowed these individuals a long time ago. Right? I'll, I'll tell you, if somebody was walking around with a hair shirt on, spouting your body, my choice, you don't think she would disavow that? And if she didn't, I hold no respect for them either. Let's be really clear. This is a bit of a movement and it's been happening for a while. These incel boys who feel alienated from their jobs, from women, from their families, from friends, who sit in the basement playing video games their whole lives are angry, have no social skills, have no ways of communicating, no realistic, viable ways that make any sense. And now you've given them a platform like X where they can say anything that comes into their head at any given moment notice. And sometimes they're met with rage and other times. And to be honest, a lot of the time now they're being met with, yes, you go guy. Well, now we have a problem. It's not something we can't solve. It's not something that's so insurmountable but I'll be damned if I sit quietly by. I'll be, di I'll be damned if I turn my head. And I'll be damned if I don't teach my students and have constant conversations with them so that they feel empowered, they feel strong, and they know it is their job in this world to make it better. Not just do right, not just speak right, but act right in this world when you see wrong being done. That's what I'm demanding. That's what everybody should be demanding. And the more we do that, the more we take our power back, the more we hold people actually accountable 
for the violence that they spew and they create and they muster, the more we will take this world back. So, in closing, don't go knock on anybody's door. But in all fairness, a citizen should have not, shouldn't have knocked at Nick's door. The police should have. And they should have arrested him on the spot for the kind of violence, hatred, and threats he has been making on the internet forever. And the fact they didn't do their job is actually the problem. See you guys next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Dismissed.